Have you ever seen a puzzle game? Want to see another one? Alright, so I want to talk about this. The game you've maybe seen for super cheap in a local game store's GameCube section. So, maybe asking, what is Super Bubble Pop? And if you already know the answer to that question, you may be asking yourself, why Super Bubble Pop? Well, from the front of the box, I can easily answer that first question by quoting, Puzzle fun with wild music and crazy bubble action! Yeah, so I've owned this game for about as long as I can remember, and for up until the past year or so, this was the only GameCube game I owned. My mom picked up Super Bubble Pop at a garage sale one day, which is funny because we never owned a GameCube, but not all was lost since the Wii is capable of playing GameCube games. Which is kind of funny because this isn't the first time that ever happened to me. A long time ago, I was also just given Super Mario Advance 2 for the Game Boy Advance. Never owned that system, but the original DS could play it, so all's well that ends well. Long story short though, I've had Super Bubble Pop forever, and I remember playing it for like 20 minutes when I first got it, and then never again. I remember just not liking it. But, when you have a game sit on your shelf that is just so odd and unique from the rest of the collection, it sticks out like a sore thumb, and so I never really forgot about owning this game. I don't know why, but I've always wanted to just go back and give Super Bubble Pop another chance, and so, many years later, after first owning the game, I have sat down and tried my very best to fully experience this game. Ladies and gentlemen, Super Bubble Pop might just be just the most perplexing puzzle game I've ever played. Yeah, all that rambling was quite frankly because I have no clue how to introduce this game. On one hand, like I said, it seems this game is everywhere from local game stores having multiple copies to random garage sales having a copy just along the precious moment dolls. So you'd think, oh, this game must have sold pretty well and be relatively popular. But then you try searching up sales numbers or just anything about the game and next to nothing shows up. Even the Wikipedia page has just about as bare minimum of information you could have on a game, just shy of stating, yeah, it released at some point. I'm pretty sure only two gaming publications ever actually even reviewed this game, those being IGN and GameSpot, with both reviews of the game being extremely harsh. IGN stated that this game is not worth paying for, and even went as far as to say, quote, if you get it for free, sell it. Okay, that's actually kind of a lie. The real quote is, if you get it if for free, sell it. Nice job, IGN. Super Bubble Pop seems like it was killed on arrival and nearly forgotten to time, but it's everywhere. There are tons of listings online for this game, with copies selling pretty recently and regularly, so what gives? Well, after playing the game a bit for myself, it didn't take long to see the biggest issue with this game. But before I get too far into that, let's just dive into the game, see what it's all about. First Impressions This game is crunchy! It doesn't help that I'm going into Super Bubble Pop right off the heels of playing a whole bunch of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which looks amazing on a PS5 and a 4K TV, but also, I'm playing this off of my 1440p resolution computer monitor with an AVI to HDMI adapter. I'm not one to judge a game by its graphics, and don't get me wrong, I love me some old school polygonal games, but something is just ugly about Bubble Pop. Oh yeah, I'm dropping the super from the title, it's just getting annoying saying it over and over. I hooked up the Wii to my CRT since that's what the game was intended to be played on, just to give it a fighting chance and uh... It does look better, but still just crunchy. It looks best on my smaller CRT, but at this point that's more of an insult than a compliment to the graphics. It's like, yeah, this old really crunchy movie from like the 1960s. It looks great if you stand 100 yards back and squint your eyes. Ah, but let's not try to judge a book by its cover. Well, you know, title screen. Let's actually dig into Bubble Pop and see if there's more than meets the eye. Nope. Yeah, what you see is what you get with this game, uh, for better or for worse. Hopping straight into the game, we can choose between either single player or two players, and since I have no friends, we're going to be going with single player. 
After that, we get to choose our character. Now, this technically is supposed to be more than just a visual choice since each character has a special ability, but from what I experienced, those special abilities all act similarly by just deleting everything on screen and kind of acting as an instant win button. We've got the DJ Robot, who's pretty much the mascot of the game, being on all of the box art and manual and everything like that. Then we've got just the most Y2K boy and girl characters you could possibly imagine, and I mean that in the most complimentary way I can. There are also two unlockable characters, but truth be told, I have no clue how you get them. I think you're supposed to complete a certain amount of levels, but yeah, I never got to that, spoiler, but I am curious who they are though. Thankfully, the back of the manual does have art of them, and oh, I don't even want to know how to unlock them now. I tried out each of the three default characters, but I mostly preferred to just rock with the DJ robot, who is officially named the Mighty C-29 Robot. If we return to the manual, careful not to look at the back of it, we can find character descriptions for the three characters. C-29 is the undefeated, legendary Bubble Pop champion known by all. Lovely Vix, the girl character, is known as the Queen of Popping, whose beauty is just captivating. And finally, we have the boy. He's cool. We may have three characters, but we've got four modes to choose from. Well, one of those is a short training mode, so I guess it's more like we got three characters and we also have three game modes. Here is where we can start to see the cracks in the gameplay design, which I haven't really discussed at all aside from Super Bubble Pop just being a puzzle game. You see, it's a puzzle game where you need to match at least three of the same color in a row and you get to make them disappear. It's a totally unique and not oversaturated at all genre of puzzle games that can stand tall on its own above all the other puzzle games out there. I don't want to knock the game design too much because I feel like it was trying to be unique, but it just really isn't. Yeah, sure, it's got a bit more dimension to it, being a 3D space with a 9x9 grid, but there's only so much you can do with a match 3 puzzle game. I thought maybe the music aspect of the game would influence how the puzzles were solved, maybe taking some inspiration from a rhythm game, but no, it has nothing to do with the actual gameplay. Therefore, a typical level in Bubble Pop plays out like so. The level starts and you were given pre-placed orbs at the back row that need to be removed. You can see two of the upcoming playable colors in advance that you get to decide where to play, and this adds a small amount of strategy to each level. Depending on how you play your moves, you will either perfect the level and get rid of all the initial bubbles quickly and move on with zero issues, or you enter what I have dubbed survival mode, where the orbs slowly stack up and pile in on you inching closer and closer to the end of the screen, where either you clutch up and win or you're game over. Sadly, this is how almost every game mode and every level in the game plays out. There's little to no variation. The harder game modes do add more colors that you can play with, and the orbs do stack up and close in on you quicker. I guess there are power-ups to try and mix up the gameplay alongside the character abilities I mentioned earlier, but I almost always forgot about these and only used them in a last-ditch effort right before failing a stage. Just that classic button mashing, hoping something will save me. So yeah, herein lies the greatest issue with Super Bubble Pop. The gameplay can be fun. There was definitely a few times where I was just in the zone, blasting through levels and really enjoying the gameplay loop, especially in the later levels, but snapping out of that flow state of enjoyment would happen so quickly. Even just within the same level, I could go from really enjoying everything and liking the game to being extremely bored and just not caring if I kept going or not. If you've finished the training stages, you've seen everything the game has to offer, so where's the motivation to keep going besides honing your skills and figuring out the puzzles? Oh, well, whoa, but hold on. You could ask that about any puzzle game or just any video game for that matter of fact as a counter argument. And well, to that I say, Fair point, but because they are fun. I can play Tetris for hours because the gameplay loop of fitting pieces together and setting up that perfect Tetris play is addictive and fun. Plus the progressive speed that increases as you get further into the game really starts to test your planning and reaction abilities up to a point where it's inevitable that it just all falls apart, at which point you want to try again and do even better. There were times playing Bubble Pop where I was having fun and I wanted to keep going, but 
those times were fast fleeting and just never hooked me into wanting to keep going more than maybe a few minutes at a time. Sure, there are characters to unlock and high scores to try and beat, but that's about it. If you strip away any character that this game has, like the music, theme, and just overall vibe, Super Bubble Pop turns into a bland match 3 puzzle game that is outclassed even by low effort attempts at the genre you can find just littering any mobile app store. I feel bad saying this because I can see an attempt at making something fun and creative here, it just didn't land well. Maybe it's the age that's killing this game's personality, but those IGN and GameSpot reviews were around the same time as release, so most likely not. All I can really say this game has going for it is the soundtrack, which is really good and fun to listen to. You can customize it to how you like and choose which songs you want to play and any songs that you don't want to loop into rotation. Call me insane, but I ended up only going with one song on repeat the entire time, that being Bubble Builder Shanty. I don't entirely know why other than I just really liked the song and anytime it would play I really just got into the groove. So only having Bubble Builder Shanty playing did help me enjoy the game just a little bit more. Well, up until the song got a little too repetitive after a while. And yeah, overall the soundtrack is great, but it does just have that early 2000s vibe to it. But not as much as the website however, which is to this day still up and accessible. It's like a time capsule of early 2000s internet and I love it. I wouldn't go as far as the IGN review to say that this game is worthless and not even worth playing it if you were paid, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend everyone try it out. I'd say a perfect review for Super Bubble Pop is, if your mom got it for you at a garage sale when you were just a kid and you never tried it out but you still kept the game lying around after all these years, pop it in and give it a try out of 10. I mean, there are always worse ways to spend a half hour or so, like, I don't know, doing drugs in front of a cop. Yeah. <laughs>